Hey guys, last week I had the time to make another video in my logic series and I chose the topic next on my list, fractions. Now I published it and was informed that this was exactly the topic which had just been addressed by Mohammed Hijab in the park. Now thankfully someone pointed out a mistake in my video where I had inserted two wrong numbers in my example so I re-uploaded it a day later in just in case somebody wonders. Now maybe Hijab saw my video and commented in a video response of his own and now we have an interesting scenario where these fractions are blowing up in his face. Muhammad Hijab is too much of a coward to talk to me directly. So wh what does he do? He goes and sits in a car and talks to the camera in Is Islamic Inheritance Mathematically Coherent? About inheritance and the coherence of inheritance. Why would I even get the impression that he's talking to me? Because he's talking about inheritance in the Quran and uses not the example suggested to him in Speaker's Corner but the exact model proposed by me. Three daughters, two parents, one wife. Okay, whatever. Let's let's take a peek, okay? Now, in his video, he asks his personal God to keep him sincere, where I would prefer he did this himself and properly. May Allah keep me sincere and keep... The problem is that by consulting his, what he calls superiors here, he is making the mess even messier. And he is damaging himself, as well as the Quran along with Islam, with what he's currently doing, with his arrogant attitude and his superficial handling of issues. Now, if he is indeed addressing me in this roundabout way, he's a fool and he's very wrong. Now, in a nutshell, um, there are some, some basically attacks against Islam through Orientalists. I must admit, I don't know what an Orientalist really is. I'm a mere, well, a, a critical observer of Islam. So this can't be me. Also, I don't attack Islam. I criticize the texts when they deserve criticism and I praise the texts when they deserve praise. And the same goes for Muslims, where, okay, where admittedly I'm strident and where I get very vocal is when it comes to false claims to lies and deceit. And at the same time, I'm happy to be corrected and I'm willing to change my mind based on evidence and facts, because honesty and integrity are important to me. And that's why I strive to faithfully represent the truth and constantly check and double check to make sure I do this. So if there is a mistake in the Quran, I point this out. And this in itself is not an attack on Islam and definitely not on Muslims. Now he, the hijab, claims that pointing out a mistake in the Quran is foolish and not a strong attack on Islam. Now, I believe that they're very f foolish attacks actually and, and that's why they're not really used that much. Frankly. So then why bother telling me this? Now there's some, some red herrings here and a massive strawman. Now my point, and it seems I need to reiterate it once again, is to show that the Quran is a normal book. Nothing special. Authored by humans, primitive, uneducated, barbaric humans by our standards today. And this is not the work of a perfect metaphysical supernatural being. So I'm not attacking Islam or Muslims. And we know Ali ibn Abi Talib is an extension of what the Prophet ﷺ told us to follow. Um, so his, his rulings, the Sahaba, they knew how to deal with this. Uh, no, I, no. Look, if the claim is perfection, all right, then I expect perfect. And what I get is a mess. A text with internal and external contradictions, incomprehensible to a large extent, rife with errors. And that's what I show. If Hijab and co. feel so vulnerable that every bit of critical analysis is an attack and a personal attack at that, I really can't help them. And just to be perfectly clear, I don't care two hoots about Hadith, the Sahaba or scholarly consensus here. I care about what it says in the Quran. I don't care what the various inheritance calculators come up with. And there's dozens. And I tested them when I did the original research a couple of years ago. And some I even had to pay for, and all with varying results. And they're all different because they don't calculate what the Quran prescribes, but the madhab, the, the school of thought and jurisdiction of a particular region. And that is the problem. The mistakes are made in the Quran, and humans then need to come to the rescue. And that is what I'm pointing out, nothing else. So let's look at the problem of the fractions in the Quran. If I take, for example, if I take an apple, 
And I say, okay, you get a third, 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 and well, you get a third too. And while we're at it, you get a third, you get a third. Okay, then we're up to nine thirds, which is an improper fraction. And this can be resolved from nine thirds to three whole apples. And this you can divide so that everybody gets a third of this one apple. Mathematically, that is, okay? But here, it's different. And thus, it's not an improper fraction either. Now, with an apple, you add two apples and the problem is solved. But here we have a fixed estate, something which can't change. The size of the estate is therefore not part of the discussion. Now, if a man dies, his estate is divided between those he leaves behind. Okay, That's, We have developed rules around this to try and balance all this fairly. So the Quran addresses this not in an allegoric way or in a spiritual way, but instead issues precise mathematical fractions. So if the author of this book, the Quran, is really an uh, all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful, a, a god, and this God, this perfect God, demands in his personal book that daughters should inherit two-thirds of the estate, then I would imagine this is what this God wants. But our little Muhammad here knows otherwise. He says in this in-car video, um, one-sixth plus one-sixth plus two-thirds plus one-eighth, it becomes an improper fraction. And his suggestion, his contribution, his solution is to simply decrease the portions the mother would get rather than rather than one sixth mother and father would get rather than one sixth they get four out of 27 which is equivalent to about 14.8 percent and he gets completely befuddled to himself in this and the the two daughters or let's say two or three daughters whatever it may be uh, let's say if it's two daughters or three daughters whatever then they will get um 29.6% rather than uh, per, pe per, per, per one of them rather than 33.3% because they'd give it two thirds otherwise and the wife would get 3 out of 27 which is 11% rather than 12.5% which would be 1 eighth so in other words in the case where it goes over 1 yeah that's what would happen okay but now let this sink in for a minute okay first off I mean he's talking nonsense as the case of two daughters is not covered what our little Muhammad is doing is saying, well, dear God, this is Muhammad, your obedient servant. Obedient, yes, but here we have an issue. So when you command someone gets two-thirds of an inheritance, I will change that just a tad to four twenty-sevenths. <laughs> and I, I hope you don't mind if I change your book a bit and apply my own arithmetic since yours sucks. Best regards and oh, say hi to Moses for me, okay? Your Muhammad. That God will be so pissed. I mean, he writes two-thirds in his book. Just, is that a la -di -da book? No, you bloody well go to hell if you do what is, no, if you, if you don't do what is commanded in this book. And here he writes, you're supposed to get two-thirds. And since this is an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise, the perfect God, who easily gets mad, by the way, I would not get him pissed off with me. But not so our Muhammad, who simply changes what the Quran and thereby this God demands and orders. Well, good luck with that. And he's, but uh, he still asks a good question, okay? How can it go over one? Well, easy, because we see again and again that this God sucks at maths. I mean, if three daughters get two third and the parents one third, that's it. It's done and over with. There's nothing left to distribute. Any of the other people mentioned in the Quran now will only add to the problem, and the resulting fraction is never ever close to one. That's how badly written the Quran is. Hardly the product of an all anything godly creature. But this is what happens if it goes over one. These are these are the mechanisms by which and through which Islam has facilitated for us to be able to um, basically reason the inheritance, the Islamic inheritance. Ah, but you know what? It gets even worse. Because hijab has now admitted that the contents of the Quran is faulty and can be and must be improved by humans. So not only has he made a huge blunder and has paved the way for factual criticism of the Quran based on objective absolute mathematics, he has also garnered interest in the topic. 
And now I think more people will look at this. Now, when I did this, like, I don't know, it feels like 10 years ago, the interest was mild. And I had a, like, a mild exchange with learned Quranic Arabic. A guy who, by the way, couldn't believe there were mistakes and who did the same thing as he jobbed it and came out horribly confused at the end. But that was it. Today, we have more people looking at Islam. So I would imagine this very easy question will be asked more now. So I think he'd better, you know, find a better and some convincing answers that um, not this hogwash because it's going to get worse for him. And, okay, the next time you see hijab, tell him hi from me, and then ask him, just as a matter of interest, what a sister inherits, according to the Quran, if there are no children? Because that answer should be interesting. Because here are two different versions. Now, he needs to decide if he, he I mean, his God doesn't know, so he needs to decide is going to be a six or a half or whatever. Let me know in the comments what you think. Comments, by the way, where people don't get censored the way many Muslims censor and quickly delete uncomfortable questions on their channels. So let me know. If they are scared, they're getting more and more desperate, I'm not. So thank you. See you on another video. Bye.